Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Plan. We know that our NAD levels drop as we age, and according to Dr. Sinclair, they will be half the levels that they are in our youth when we reach 50. As I am now 60, checking my NAD levels is something that I wanted to do. My wife and I took our first NAD test in August last year and released our results at the time. They were not as good as we had hoped. We decided to try liposomal NMN to see if it could help. We have now got our results from our second NAD test. In this video, we will have a quick look at both sets of results, how they have changed and what may have caused these changes. Firstly, disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing our personal experience and updates, and it is a, not a recommendation or medical advice. Here are my results from my first test in August. My level was 22.9 micromoles, which according to the provider of the test is poor. Here are my wife's results, which she took at the same time. Her NAD levels were 19.35, which also put her in the poor range. Why is it important to measure our NAD? NAD is a key molecule in many processes in our cells, particularly those related to energy production and DNA repair. NAD levels go down with age and lower NAD has been associated with some of the diseases of aging. We had been taking NMN and following a healthy lifestyle, so we were disappointed with our first results and wanted to do something to raise our NAD levels. Let's see how we did. Here are my results from my second test. This time it was 36.1 micromoles, which is considered optimal and is a 58% increase. For my wife, her result was better than mine at 38.6 micromoles. This is a big jump and also puts her into the optimal range. In fact, it was a 99% increase, so her levels almost doubled. What changes did we make between August and December? There are a number of things which can affect NAD levels, such as exercise and fasting. We were already doing most of these activities and continued with them. The main change we did make was to start taking two supplements. The first of these was liposomal NMN rather than a powdered form. NMN is a precursor to NAD and taking NMN has been shown to raise NAD levels. Initially I was taking 500 milligrams, then later one gram daily. My wife was not taking NMN as much as me, but recently she has been taking 250 milligrams a day. The other supplement I've been taking is liposomal epigenin. We were taking dried parsley before as parsley is a high concentration of the molecule, but have now switched to a supplement. Epigenin inhibits CD38, a protein in the body which increases with age and can consume NAD. For this, I'm taking 35 milligrams daily. My wife also took 35 milligrams, but was not taking it every day. Both of these supplements are liposomal. Why are we using liposomes? We did make a video on this, which is linked to in the description, but briefly liposomal packaging may increase the bioavailability of the molecules. Liposomes are nanometer sized balls of fat in which a payload is wrapped and protected. For molecules such as NMN, which can be metabolized by bacteria in the gut or epigenin, which is not water soluble, liposomes may make sense. Both of the supplements that we are taking and the test are from Alive by Science. There is a 10% discount code in the description. We will continue to try to optimize our NAD levels and we will repeat the tests more frequently in future. We also test our epigenetic age and blood markers and report on how those are doing. So please subscribe to our channel for further updates. The NAD tests come from Gymfinity and we interviewed Professor Scher, the founder of the company, earlier. Here is a short clip from that interview of him talking about the tests. You can watch the full interview for more details. We have two different types of NAD uh, tests. Mm. So if you look at uh, where NAD can be found inside of our body, you can put them into two major locations. Most people, uh, 
talk about NAD that's inside the cells. Mm. Uh, when you talk about NAD, and that's what we call intracellular NAD. And but NAD can also be secreted from the cells into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And we call this form of NAD the circulating NAD, or NAD, or plasma NAD, if you want. Mm -hmm. So, so the uh, uh, NAD in, inside of the blood can circulate all over the body. And this actually has very important functions that we can perhaps get into a little later. Mm. So we actually develop uh, the test that can be uh, that can be used to measure both intracellular and circulating NAD. For uh, intracellular NAD, we uh, uh, use blood uh, spots that are uh, you, you can basically do a fingerprint and apply a drop of blood on a field paper. Mm. Uh, it's a type of field paper that's commonly used in uh, newborn screening uh, laboratories. So it's very easy to do. And once the blood is dry on the field paper, and we apply uh, uh, NAD fixing buffer or NAD stabilizing buffer, that will um, keep the NAD stable for many days. And I think this is a really critical uh, step because NAD is very unstable, as you know. Mm. And if you don't uh, uh, stabilize the molecule, you are not going to be able to measure it. And the second uh, important uh, component of our test is a high throughput uh, uh, technology that can be uh, analyzed using uh, automated uh, analyzer. So that allows us to analyze hundreds of samples a day by a single technician. And I think that's important for us to reduce the cost and really uh, make the test available to uh, you know, all consumers. And yeah, our, our goal is to uh, democratize the test so uh, everyone can do it because NAD is so important in uh, our cellular function and, and the level of NAD varies um, uh, in different individuals and it declines with age and that's you know, widely known. So it's extremely important for us to monitor our NAD levels and especially important for us to know uh, what's a, a supplementation or some other kind of uh, NAD uh, uh, boosting uh, are actually working or not.